God be with you. I'm here. Can't you see we're still bombarded? I'm here. Good luck then. Since Sir Divish's colours still aren't flying over Talmberg, I suppose we'll be attacking. Just so. That Istran's a stubborn bastard. All right. When do we start? There's no reason to wait. Are you really ready? If you need to rest or anything, we can still wait. You won't have another chance until we've won the day. Or until your final rest. I'm ready. Glad to hear it. We're going to attack on two fronts. The North Gate and the West Wall, which will scale with ladders. The attack will be split into different stages. Taking the outer walls, the inner bailey, and finally the core of the castle and the tower. How are we going to attack the gate? We'll try to do as much damage as we can with the trebuchet first. Kieser claims he can even hit it directly. Even if that's true, we'll have to charge through a downpour of enemy arrows all the way to the portcullis. Portcullis? Fortunately, it's wooden, so we'll be able to break it down. But dealing with the defense in the bailey won't be easy. And what's the plan for attacking the west wall? First, we have to get men to the wall with ladders, which is no easy matter under fire, so we'll need as many men covering them as possible. As soon as the ladders are in place, our foot soldiers will run up and try to scale the wall. Once a few of them get to the battlements, we should quickly gain the upper hand. How will we take the battlements? Either by scaling the west wall, or our men at the gate will help. If they can break through, that is. And the inner bailey? That will be tough. Even if we get through the gate and into the outer bailey, we're still a long way from victory. The castle is designed so we'll be like hens in a coop to anyone with a bow on the inner battlements. We'll have to either fight our way through, or somehow get around them. What about the living quarters? There, I'm worried most about the hostages. Once we're inside, Istvan will know defeat is inevitable, but we'll still have to fight for each and every room. I think I've heard everything I need to know. Do you want to join the attack on the walls or on the gate? Remember, many of the Scalot's men will follow you. It could make a big difference. I'll help with the attack on the walls. I'm proud of you, Henry. You've changed from an insolent pup into a tough, reliable fighter. And as God is my witness, we will kick those whore sons' arses. A village lad and an old soldier? <laughs> this man must be shaking in his boots. <laughs> if he's not shaking, then he doesn't know what he's got coming. Just one last thing, though. No matter how good the plan is, something always gets fucked up. Keep your eyes open and take advantage of every chance. Help your comrades and don't go rushing in where you're outnumbered. We have to take the castle gradually, one position after another. I'll remember that. Good luck to you, stripling. Good luck to you, old soldier. Good luck then.
Sir, we should give the order. Let's see if Istvan Toth can worm his way out of this one. Don't tempt fate, Hanush. Istvan! It's over! You want us to come and get you? I wouldn't advise that. Your friend Divish wants to see his wife alive again. And Sir Radzik? Are both hostages unharmed? For now, Hanush, unless circumstances change. Well, I'm glad to hear it. My guest is also safe and sound, but he's also quite keen to go home. I imagine you feel the same way. It's been a long time since you warmed yourself at your own hearth. I'm in no hurry. I've plenty of supplies here. Grand view and excellent company. What more could I want? Your freedom! Freedom? Freedom to get an arrow in the back? Sir, you're all noblemen here. All bound by honour. I give you my word as a knight and lord, and that of my companions. If you release Lady Stephanie and Sir Radzig, you may leave the castle with your men and go on your way unharmed. And just how far will we get? What good will it do me if your men attack us in the woods instead of here? If you give me your word of honor that you will leave and never return, I promise you safe passage to the boundary of this fiefdom. What happens after that is up to you and the will of God Almighty. Very well then, but I want a small safeguard. I'll give you her ladyship, but Radzig comes with me. I'll release him in scallets. Out of the question! Is our word not good enough for you? Is mine not good enough for you? I swear I'll release him when I get to a safe distance. I'll go with him, Hanush. Let the Lady Stephanie have her freedom now. Father! Don't worry, son. I trust Lord Toth's self-interest more than his word. He wouldn't be fool enough to harm me. If you're certain, Radzig, prepare horses and supplies and tell your men to pull back. We'll come down. You heard him. Get to work. And any man who breaks his truce answers to me. So are you really going to let them go? My word is my bond, Henry. He's a cutthroat and a liar. Good men are dead because of him. What's to stop us from skewering him as soon as he sets foot outside? Our honour. If you let him go, he'll do the same again. Or worse, God's justice will find him. And then, he'll get a taste of my mace. If we break our word of honor, we have none. And without honor, we are nothing. Never fear. Your father will be all right. We'll hunt down those vermin yet. Bring the horses. Here she is, as I promised. Not a hair on her head armed. Divish. <laughs> Stephanie. Forgive me, husband. I'm sorry. For what? For letting them into the castle. Oh, come now, my dear. You're not to blame. I didn't know who he was. I said he was your friend. Never mind. Did he hurt you? No. I hope your word can be trusted. Certainly more than yours. If everything goes as agreed, I'll set Radzig free in Scalitz. If anyone tries to follow us, I'll kill him. We won't. My apologies for keeping you from your father, but you'll see each other soon enough. Oh, I almost forgot. Your sword. I expect you'll want it back after all the trouble you went to. Actually, you know what? I think I'll keep it as a memento. This isn't over. I'll find you. I look forward to it. Yeah! Quick, to the 
battlements. We have to see which way they go. Oh, they really are heading for Scallets. Mount up, Henry. You've heard what he'll do if we follow them. We're not going to follow them. We just have to collect your father. Or do you want him to walk back here when they release him? Yeah. Yeah. What should I say to him? Don't worry. It'll come to you. You'll see. Well, I just hope he'll be there. Alive. The way you found Tom. Sneaking into Brannick all on your own. Well, what I mean is, hats off to you, Hal. You wouldn't catch me doing that. Truth is, I didn't think yeah. much about it. I just felt I had to do it. Yeah. What will you do now? Not long ago, I only made plans three days ahead at most. Maybe I really could do something for Rate and its people. Yeah. Something really big. But there'll be plenty of time for that yeah. later. Noble, right? Yes, so am I. Sir Radzik will be there. This is quite a turnaround, isn't it? What do you mean? How long have we known each other? A few weeks? Yeah. Something like that. Before that, I was chasing wenches around Rate and you were digging turnips. Now look at us. A pair of veterans. Uh, I was an apprentice blacksmith, not a turnip digger. Yeah. Same difference, you silly bugger. No sign of them. Move on. There! I'm glad to see Ishban kept his word, sir. Not half as glad as I am, Your Grace. Well, we kept our word too. And now Toth has had his head start and he's fair game. Which way do they go? To the north, but I would be careful, Sir Hans. Fear not, Your Grace. I have twice as many men as he. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer. I'm sure the two of you have a lot to say to each other. Let's go! All right, Father. I am. They treated me quite decently. Although they did steal my horse, so I'll have to go back on foot. It looks like it's all over. Not by a long shot. It won't be over until we get this mess cleared up. We catch that bastard. How could we let him go? Would you rather we killed him? Even if it meant Lady Stephanie and I died too? No, of course not. But what was to stop us from killing him after the exchange? Honor? Honor? If the word of honor of a nobleman could not be trusted, then he would never have agreed to the exchange. And where's the honor in abandoning your son? Hmm. You know how it is. We were young. It happened. 
and I couldn't marry a commoner. Then your father, I mean Martin, came along and took care of both of you. Well, he knew it. What? That I was your father? Certainly. He was a great man. He took you as his own. And I always kept an eye on you. Of that you can be sure. I know so little about his past. He told you nothing. Oddly enough, even though you don't have his blood, you're very like him. When he was around your age, he became bored of his trade and set out to see the world. He lived through many adventures, even fought in a war. In a war? Yes, in Poland, I believe. And I don't think he cared much for it. That's why he wanted me to stay at home. He spent some time in Prague, then settled in Kuttenberg. But it seems he quarreled with someone there and finally ended up here. You know the rest. I loved him, but even so, I, I somehow always had a feeling I didn't quite fit in. It was in your blood, I suppose. <laughs> I lost the one thing I had left from him. Your sword. Ah, the sword. It's not my sword. It's yours. For a moment there, it was so near, yet so far. Oh, well, it can't be helped. It was almost within my grasp, but... Just then, I had something else on my mind. Well, I think we may yet have a chance to get it back. This business with Toth is not yet over, unfortunately. Well, that's a chance I'd welcome. Not just to get the sword, but that bastard Istvan, too. And then I'll find that German whore son who torched Scalitz, and I'll slay him with it. I'll never forget his face. Or his name. Mark Wart von Aulitz. Those are noble intentions, son. But don't forget there are other things in this world that are worth living for. Like what? Look around you. Blue skies overhead, green grass underfoot, beautiful girls. Good wine. A few good friends and a fine steed under your backside. Those are things worth living for. Can't deny that swine who killed your mother must pay for what he did. But it's better not to dwell too much on that at the cost of those other things. On the subject of steeds, I think we'll have to ride like the Knights Templar. How's that? Two up. One day I'll tell you how they got their seal. You can take the front. It's like I always imagined it would be, teaching my boy to ride. Although it would be better if you're a little smaller. My word, it's all go today, isn't it? I wonder who this is. I think I know. It's Margrave Jobst. The king's cousin? I wonder what he wants. I guess we'll find out soon enough.
Doing well, son. Father. Come now. You know who sired you. That doesn't matter now. I miss you, Amma. I miss you very much. You'll be fine. We're proud of you. What? I let you down. I, I lost the sword. I let that bastard get away. Don't be so hard on yourself. There was nothing you could have done to save us. And someone has to live and carry the torch. As for the sword, it's just a thing. You didn't want me fighting. Now look at me. Standing up to evil isn't the same as sowing its seeds. We did what was right. I have to leave you now. Oh, please. You know I can't stay. Will I ever see you again? God knows. Make her proud. were you dreaming about? I couldn't wake you, and it's well past dawn. Sir Radzik wants you at the upper castle. The lords are in council with Yobbs. Right. I'll go straight away. What is it? It's just... I don't know how to address you anymore. All of a sudden, you're Sir Radzig's son, hobnobbing with lords and ladies. And here's me, as common as muck. Oh, give over, you idiot. Do I look like a lord to you? Not really. You're as much a lord as I am a nun. And I've never looked good in a habit. <laughs> Get out of here! Or I'll have you clapped in the stocks. Are you going to the meeting with Margrave Jobst as well? I am. What about Istvan? 
I assume that we didn't catch him? No. Because if we had, you'd be the first one to know. Have no fear. We'll get him eventually. I hope you're right. Anyway, let's go and see what Jobst wants from us. My lords, Christ's blessings on you all. And on you, Lord Gaben. And this is my son, Henry. I didn't know you had a son, Sir Redzig. It came as a bit of a surprise to young Henry, too. <laughs> this gentleman here is John II of Liechtenstein, a member of my council. I'm honored, gentlemen. Come join us. Margrave Jobst was just about to tell us the reason for his visit. Your Grace. I'm sure we're all agreed, Your Graces, that all this unrest must come to an end. This kingdom needs a king. The question is, which king? My cousin, Wenceslas IV, who is being held in captivity. I have to confess, my lord, that your answer surprises me a little. If I'm correctly informed until recently, you sided with your other cousin, Sigismund. That I cannot deny, and I have always stated my position plainly. But times have changed. How have they changed, Your Grace? Sir, there is one thing on which we undoubtedly concur. That King Wenceslas, unfortunately, did not inherit his father's gift for governing. Sadly, his failures have cost Bohemia, the nobles, and our whole Luxembourg family a great deal of money and effort. How did the king let it go so far, damn it? It's in his temperament. He cares only for wine, women, and the hunt. A king, in fact, who never wanted to be king. Then why didn't he just let his brother have the crown? <laughs> Young sir, the crown weighs heavy when there are duties to be performed. But to surrender it means giving up great privileges, too. But he did surrender power to his brother. When things started getting out of hand, Wenceslas appealed to Sigismund for help in restoring order. What you're saying, Wenceslas has invited him here? This is starting to make my head spin. Actually, it makes sense when you think about it. Sigismund wanted to re-establish the power of the whole House of Luxembourg. He thought if he helped Wenceslas win the Imperial Crown, in return his brother would help him become the King of the Romans and leave the actual reign of Bohemia and the Empire to him. Sigismund would govern, while Wenceslas could carry on doing what he was best at, enjoying the life of the Imperial Court. Why wasn't Wenceslas crowned Holy Roman Emperor long ago? He was already elected King of the Romans. All he had to do was go and let the Pope put the damn Imperial crown on his head. Who knows? Maybe he'd prefer hunting and consorting with bathhouse wenches to spending time with the Pope. Well, so would I, I must admit. <laughs> Sigismund's plan seemed sound enough, but it didn't quite work out, did it? It worked for a while. He and his brother reached an agreement. Sigismund took over administration of the kingdom and began planning Wenceslas' journey to Rome for the imperial coronation. But then Wenceslas realized he would just be a puppet with a crown. I must say, Margrave Jobst. Wenceslas and Prokop behave rather like naughty children in need of a good clout about the ears. Sigismund would agree. He was already planning his rule of Bohemia, and all of a sudden, the rug was pulled from under him. I'd say he lost his patience and decided he'd drag Wenceslas to the coronation, kicking and screaming if he had to. Just like a naughty child, as you say. So he abducted him and your brother Prokop too, if I heard correctly. Correct. And you helped him do it, if I heard correctly. Yes, your graces, it's true. I was there when Sigismund abducted Prokop. I thought everything could somehow be settled, that we could make my brother see sense. But Sigismund just wanted to put an end to the dispute once and for all, whatever the cost. There was nothing I could do to stop him. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here. Ah. 
The worst of it is that it was all for nothing. Instead of putting a stop to the revolt, it escalated it, and the result is this chaos we have today. That's true enough, sir. But I must admit now, I'm not sure what your position is. The king is incompetent, but we must protect him. The simple truth, gentlemen, is that for all of Wenceslas's faults, we have no one else. So we'll have to make do with his idleness. Uh, people like him, though. Uh. But what can we do now? Sigismund has the League of Lords behind him. Otto von Bergolf, Heinrich von Rosenberg... The situation has gotten completely out of control. Now even the nobles of the League of Lords are realizing that Sigismund wasn't the right choice. So now Bergolf is on your side. Are we to assemble an army together with him and face Sigismund on the field of battle? We're not in Hungary now. Such affairs may be settled elegantly, without unnecessary hostilities or expenses. I have negotiated an alliance with the Hungarian bishops, the Polish, and of course the Czech nobility, against Sigismund. Every day he is losing the ground under his feet, and that's why I need your help too. What kind of help, though? Sigismund has a massive army, and Rosenberg, Burghoff, and Prague are behind him. Do you have an army you could face him with? But that's not what I mean at all. There's been a revolt against Sigismund in Hungary. <laughs> Partly due to my efforts. And now he'll have to choose whether he wants to gain the Bohemian crown, which is a very risky enterprise, or hold on to the Hungarian one. He can't have both. And there's a tough struggle awaiting him in Hungary. I'm not sure he'll win, and Rosenberg and Berghoff know it too. They're not stupid. If the Bohemian nobility stands together, they will turn. We are men of little consequence, Margrave. Radzig here lost everything because of his alliance with Wenceslas. So Divish came within a hair of the same fate. Even Ratte is defenseless against Sigismund and the League of Lords. What's more, Your Grace, King Wenceslas languishes in captivity in Vienna. He can't rule too well from there. And what do you propose? To sit with your arms folded till the Bohemian lands are turned to ashes like scarlets? We have to put a stop to this senseless war! And do you know, sir, what the true position of the League of Lords is? I'm not on the best of terms with them at this moment, so you'll have to ask them yourselves. Yes. Why not? I'll go and visit Burgov at his castle and we'll see what he tells me. <laughs> you know, that's not such a bad idea, young sir. True. Though a little risky. I doubt Burgov would harm a blue-blooded envoy. And you can find out what he has to say about developments, and what the League of Lords is planning. Then we'll decide what to do next. I'll help you compose a letter to him. I'd like Henry to come with me. Why not? He's proven himself an able investigator, and he'll also be a good bodyguard if anything should happen. And I'll send Sir John here to Kutenberg to be my eyes and ears there. I believe both your reports will help us get a better grip on the situation. When can you set out? Just as soon as I've packed my things. Excellent. Margrave Jobs and I will draft the letter. Get ready, and we'll meet back here. I expect it would be best to write it in your name as Lord of Lipa. Quite so, Margrave. What exactly am I to write? So, it looks like you're off on a mission. Yes. I can't wait. I don't want to dampen your spirits, my boy, but watch out. These are evil times, and who knows what can happen along the way. Not to mention that Bergov is no saint. Don't worry. I know. You've shown you can fend for yourself, but do take care. You'll be traveling as Lord Capon's bodyguard. You'll be there to make sure nothing untoward happens to him. Keep your eyes peeled and your ears wide open. What Bergov tells you is one thing, but what you see may be quite another. Rest assured, Father. And don't get embroiled in anything else. Just hand over the letter, hear out his reply, and return. Yes. Very well. Bergov is at Trotsky Castle. 
I think you'll find it quite an eye-opener. It's one of the finest castles in the land. It's three days' ride from here, so unless you hit a snag along the way, you'll be back soon enough. Any questions? I'm getting a bit lost in the Luxembourg lineage. It all seems a bit too tangled. The Luxembourgs have ruled the Empire and Bohemia for almost a hundred years now. Emperor Charles brought this land to prominence. When he was in power, things had never been so good. Wenceslas and Sigismund are his sons, but by different mothers. Jobst and Prokop are their cousins. They were entrusted with governing Moravia. But instead, they've been in a bitter armed feud for years. And now Sigismund's fallen out with Wenceslas. Wenceslas also had another brother, the youngest, John of Gerlitz, who was most probably poisoned. They seem like a hot-blooded lot. It's hard to keep up with their affairs, since they tend to change their alliances from one day to the next. Who is he really, this Jobst? The cousin of King Wenceslas. He's the Margrave of Moravia. I admit I don't know what to make of him myself. Until recently, he was allied with the League of Lords. For a time, he even served Rupert of the Palatinate against the king. And now suddenly, he's reversed his position. I don't know what led him to do it, and one can't help being suspicious. It's best to keep a watchful eye on him. But he really is the leader of the resistance against Sigismund these days. We'll just have to see how it all turns out. I'm a bit concerned so many people seem to think so little of King Wenceslas. You knew him, didn't you? What's he really like? <sighs> well, there's no straightforward answer to that question. He certainly makes a great hunting and drinking companion, but he can be very fiery and impetuous when things don't go how he'd like them. He never had much of a head for high office. He finds it tiresome. But once a man's grasped the scepter, it's hard to let it go again. You can't just abscond. You've seen for yourself what happens when he disappears for a few months. Better a bad but legitimate king than a bloody war over the throne. Who is this Prokop that Jobs spoke of? Jobs' brother, the king's cousin. He and Jobs warred over Moravian supremacy for years. Then they were allies for a while, betrayed Wenceslas, and sided with Rupert of the Palatinate. But after Sigismund abducted Wenceslas, Prokop fomented a revolt against him, and Sigismund had him captured. Politics. <laughs> make of it what you will. I, for one, can't make head or tail of it most of the time. The League of Lords and that Burgoff we're off to see. Who are they exactly? The Lords of the powerful houses. Heinrich of Rosenberg, Otto of Burgoff, Heinrich of Raditz and others. They're unhappy with the way their influence declined after Wenceslas surrounded himself with the lesser orders of nobility. They abducted the king years ago and made him bow to their will. They got away with it that time and now they've joined forces with Sigismund and done it again. But now it seems that Sigismund's behavior is starting to rub them up the wrong way. So they may well be thinking twice. We'll see what Burgoff has to say. I don't know all that much about Sigismund. He's the king's younger brother and king of Hungary in his own right. Seven years ago, he led a crusade against the Turks and was defeated at Nicopolis. Some say it was due to the recklessness of the French knights, most of whom were mercilessly slaughtered. Sigismund is ambitious and capable. He might well make a better ruler than Wenceslas, but he's arrogant, and to our misfortune, brutal. Not long ago, he himself was held captive by the Hungarian nobility. They dislike him as much as some of the Czech and German noblemen do his brother Wenceslas. Ironically, Wenceslas joined forces with Jobst to liberate him, and now this is how Sigismund repays his brother. There's no doubt about it, God does move in mysterious ways. Rupert of the Palatinate. That's a name I hadn't heard before today. Rupert is the Prince Elector of the Palatinate. What's a Prince Elector? The Prince Electors are dignitaries of the Holy Roman Empire who have the right to elect the King of the Romans, who would then be crowned Holy Roman Emperor by the Pope. Rupert took the title for himself with the help of three other prince electors, even though Wenceslas had already been appointed. Some of the nobility in the empire recognized Rupert's claim, but when he went to Rome to be crowned emperor, it turned into a fiasco. Now he's doing his utmost to get Wenceslas to acknowledge him, but so far without success. So, now we have two kings of the Romans. Jobst sided with Sigismund for a while, but now he switched allegiance. 
He seems to do that quite a lot. That young man, Sir John of Liechtenstein, why is he here? The Liechtensteins are a powerful Austrian family with estates in Austria and Moravia. Sir John sits on Jobst Council. Since the king's being held captive in Vienna, I suppose it makes sense to have a powerful Austrian house as allies. It could be very useful. That's about all. Very well. Take the letter from Sir Hanush, and good luck, son. Look out! I believe we have written it well, gentlemen. Without a doubt. No one could deduce from this whether we are Sigismund's allies or foes. <laughs> I must travel back to Brno now, but soon I will go to Brandenburg and I will stop here on the way back. By then, Sir Capon should be back and we can discuss how to proceed. Right. Before you leave, my lord, there is one thing that gives me no rest. Why did Sigismund come as a foe? It makes no sense. If I may, sir. I think I can explain. Oh, please enlighten us, young sir. I live not far from Hungary, where Sigismund reigns. It is a savage country, and the constant war with the Turks has hardened the people. They need a monarch with an iron hand. So when Sigismund felt the wind of revolt, he reacted as he would at home. Only what works on the Hungarian nobles does not work here in Bohemia. Bringing order is one thing, but slaughtering and pillaging with a horde of barbarians quite another. Uh, what purpose does that serve? But Sigismund did give the Bohemian nobles a chance to take his side. It was only when they refused his ultimatum that he lost patience and took to the sword. As for the barbarians, he could afford nothing better. The Hungarian nobility would gain nothing from joining his campaign in Bohemia. He didn't have enough coin for a regular army, and so he recruited the Cumans. What he does not pay them, they make up for in plunder. But in the end, he didn't have enough to even satisfy the Cumans. That's why he raided Gutenberg and Scarlets. He wanted the silver. That makes sense. My lords, how's the letter coming along? It's done. Then we can be on our way. Now remember what we said, boy. All you have to do is deliver the letter, listen to the answer, and come back here. Don't provoke Burkhoff in any way. Provoke? Me? Never, Uncle. We'll be back in a few days. Farewell, Your Graces. Come, Henry, my men are waiting. I wish you Godspeed. Come now, Hal. My men are mustered in the courtyard. We can get going. Down! Oh. Learn to ride a horse, idiot! So, can we set off now, Henry? Of course. I can't wait. So, to horse! The Lord of Burgov is bound to be waiting as eagerly.
So, how is life as a high-born bastard? I'm getting used to it. But what about Rudzik? Has he accounted for not owning up to you the whole time? He explained it. All will be well, I think. Glad to hear it. It's far more acceptable for a nobleman to befriend a noble bastard than a blacksmith, son. Mind you, don't come to blows with a blacksmith, my young lord. What do you think about Sir Yobst and his plan? Well, I admit all the scheming has me a little lost. I thought Sigismund was the devil, Wenceslas a martyr, those on his side the heroes, and those against him the villains. I believed we'd rescue the king and all would be well again. But now it looks a lot more complicated. <laughs> exactly. I didn't expect the noble lords to be as noble as the angels, but I hadn't expected such a sewer. They behave like children. I can't fathom how after all this backstabbing they're somehow still on speaking terms. I don't know either. Beggar's belief. Did you know that King Wenceslas is such a... such a... Feckless drunkard? Not really. And to be honest, I'm not sure I wanted to know. I slept better believing my fate was watched over by a wise and powerful monarch. So did I. What a dismal world when you can't keep trust in your own king. On the other hand, times were better with him here than with him gone. Isn't that the truth? What do you think of Sigismund? If I were him, I'd have had enough of my brother even sooner. But he's a monster. Look at what those hordes of his are getting up to here. What he did in Scalitz. True enough. On the other hand, if Wenceslas and Prokop hadn't come across him, none of this would have happened. No one forced him to burn Scalitz. That's a fact. But he couldn't let them shit all over him either. Not that I'm defending He's a weasel. No doubt about that. Do you know anything about Prokop? Ha! <laughs> Sir Hanish could tell you a thing or two about him. Why? Last winter, a certain Sir Jan Sokol of Lamberg, a well-known knight, or robber baron to some, tried to occupy the city of Iglau, which was on the orders of none other than Prokop. And what has that got to do with Hanish? Well, he was there with him. Of course that's not something to brag about in front of Yost. And what was it all about? They wanted to occupy a city that was on the side of the League of Lords, but despite there being several hundred strong, they didn't take it. For one thing, they couldn't get past the Eglau women, with their pitchforks and cauldrons of hot water. <laughs> I would never have thought of Sahana as just such a rebel. And have you heard anything about Rupert of the Palatinate? A little. He can't manage even to wrest power from a king who doesn't much care for ruling and isn't fighting back. That doesn't seem like a man who has what it takes to rule. And that's all I need to know. And that Burgoff we're going to see, do you know anything about him? I haven't heard much good about him, but I have a feeling that some other nobles are quite in awe of him. And his castle is apparently quite impressive. I'll be interested to see for myself. What about the League of Lords? Wealthy, pompous. The king doesn't seem to like them much. He's chosen to let the lesser ranks of the nobility into his circle. Men like your father. I admit I don't blame him one bit. But the lords weren't happy about their lost influence, so they put their foot down. If I were Wenceslas, I'd have let them hang after they abducted me the first time. But he gave them seats at the provincial council? Little wonder they're back at their old tricks.